Welcome back viewers. In today's video, we are going to check out the Gecko Linux rolling genome desktop. So Gecko Linux comes with static as well as rolling ISOs. So rolling means the ISOs get continuously updated and your desktop that you install will get uh, uh, continuously updated. There is no need to install a new version. So the new version of the desktop will be available through the updates. And in the static version, it is uh, LTS version. So there is a long term support. The packages will be older and the desktop will remain uh, very much stable uh, during its lifetime. So let us start with the uh, review of the Gecko Linux rolling Gnome desktop. So I have already installed the virtual machine and we will be logging into the virtual machine right now. So we will check out how the Gecko Linux developers have implemented the Gnome desktop in Gecko Linux. Yes, so this is the grub menu. You can see it here. There are advanced options and the recovery mode kernel is also available. So we will log in with the 5.19.1-1 default kernel. So the kernel is not that old. 5.19 is uh, quite latest kernel. But it is not that much uh, say updated like uh, what you get in your Arch Linux. I think there will be uh, updated kernels like 6, uh, 6, 6 6.1 also. So we'll have to check. They, they might be available in the repos. But the ISO contains the default kernel as 5.19 only. So this is the login screen. You can see it here. So the accessibility features, all of them are available here. You got the network manager, the volume control and the power menu is there. And here you have to log in using your password. Let us check out the sessions. So only two sessions are there, Genome and OpenBox. So we will check out whether this is valid. I think it is uh, most probably it is valid only. And the other session is OpenBox. So let us now log in into the desktop itself. Okay, so now what we have to do is, this is the desktop. First thing I think we should uh, open the settings and do the resolution correction. So the resolution is not scaled automatically to the proper setting. So that setting should work, yes. Now let us go to the display. It is perfect now. I think what I have to do is I will just open my settings, computer settings, and switch off the night light. Night light. So yes, now it is okay. So you can see. Now let us close this. First, we will take a walk around of the desktop itself. So you have got this green wallpaper so gecko linux as well as spiral linux the developer is same and as per the test there is a, some uniformity between the loops of the two distros so it is based on some uh, cool looking green color so you can see it here horizontal workspaces are there at the top there is activities then what is this this is the track changes i don't know what exactly it is let us check out okay so this is the gpatch so you can track what is been uh, copied to the clipboard. So GPS is nothing but a clipboard. So the clipboard is there. You got the wire connection. The settings is there. You can lock your keyboard and the power menu is there at the bottom. It is so everything is typical and the simple volume control is there. We will close the GPS. At the bottom there is dock. So you got Firefox. Let us open the Firefox. Meanwhile, the file manager is there, Nautilus. We will open that also. And here you can see the different applications that are pre installed. So, just a moment, let me go back. We go back to the workspace and let us check out the version of Firefox.
think yes so the version of firefox is 103.0.2 so it is not very old but not the latest also so it is in between so we will keep it it is plain firefox there is nothing extra only the links to the packages wiki list forums and the search uh, open source search is available so this is not changed by the gecko developer so it is continuing with the open source search packages wikis list and forums so that's good now this is your files gnome files version is 42.2 not very old but not the latest one also so we'll close this now let us check out the different applications that are pre-installed so you got clementine media player genome contacts dconf editor genome documents drawing is there genome photos is there extensions calculator gedit is there gparted is there document scanner is there settings system monitor gps terminals the standard uh, genome utilities like uh, genome disk image viewer document viewer screenshot tweaks and the archive manager is there and at the bottom you have got the gps the hp device manager is installed by default libreoffice suite is there complete suite is there pidgin is there pidgin is a chat messenger then you have got power statistics print settings pulse audio volume control sax3 is there then you got the SUSE Studio Image Writer, Search for Files, Thunderbird is there, Transmission is there, it is a BitTorrent Downloader, you all, you all know. The VLC Media Player, the YAST is there and the YAST modules are there, you can see, I think the complete YAST modules, yes, complete YAST modules are there. So nothing is left out here. Okay, so what we will do is let us go back to the first page of the applications. Let us check out the extensions. So, what they have got included in the extension. So, you can see here they have got a built in desktop icon extensions are there. GPEST is offered as an extension and the user themes are there. So, you can turn all this on. You can also turn the desktop icons on, but this extension is not comp compatible with the current Gnome say, version. So, don't uh, start it otherwise you will have issue so it is disabled by default because this uh, desktop icons is not compatible with the current genome uh, edition so that's it if you want we can see the extension version is 42.4 so we will close this now further let us check out gparted so you have to queue your password so we'll check out what how we are installed this just a moment this uh, desktop is little bit sluggish as compared to open source open source is okay there is no issue but this uh, this effect is little bit sluggish you can see uh, when we opened the gparted it took some time to properly scale and uh, scale the resolution and be shown on the screen so we have used the XFS file system for the root partition. So uh, when we go through this review, you can also check out the performance of XFS, whether it is slow, fast, how it is performing, how the mem uh, this memory uh, is read and returned to the disk. So if it is a fast, if you have no issues uh, during the opening of application closing of applications the multiple windows that are open then you have to uh, conclude that the file system is properly done the partition size is proper and the system is working overall okay so here in this we are not installed the swap there is no swap so there won't be any possibility of hibernation so the system will never hibernate if you install or do partitions like this now I will close this. Further, let us open the system monitor. So let us see what the resources are available. So you can see the memory usage is 1.2. It is 100 MB more than the typical Gnome desktop. 
in ubuntu or in open source open source also it is around uh, 1.1 or 1 gb so this is 1.2 gb in debian it is 1.1 gb for the last two or three uh, gnome versions so it is the memory usage is around 1.1 it is 1.2 here so it is little bit uh, heavy memory usage swap is zero so it is not using swap but uh, it was not sure the swap was not shown uh, yes so uh, since we had not done the partition uh, as a swap as a partition the swap file has been created and this 4.1 gb is from the swap file so the swap file has been created inside the root partition so that's why the swap is shown so the system has created a swap file so if required the system will swap to the swap file instead of the swap partition yes because what happened is I installed this desktop around 4 or 5 days back and then I got busy with my work so I could not uh, record this video so I just forgotten what I did but uh, the gparted was uh, showing the correct thing and this is also showing correct thing because we had not installed the swap partition but we had uh, installed the system without swap and the system created a swap file instead of uh, using the swap partition okay now what we will do let us see yes let us open this let us try out the gdisk so here you can see the gdisk so here also you can see there is no swap space only the root partition and the root, root partition is there so i will close this further let us check out the different utilities let us go and check the you know tricks so the extensions have moved okay you have to just click the containing button so this is typical uh, genome quick uh, features and uh, are available in the cursor there is only one cursor theme that is advaita icon theme fenza genome high color high contrast not much only uh, three or four is there in shell there is no shell theme installed you can install it by downloading the shell theme and then uh, uploading the shell theme through this so it will get installed images is there so let us check out so there are different images available this is the uh, default wallpaper image so we can change let us go over to this let us see what happens yes so these images are nothing but the default open source wallpapers let us check out the different things so it is nothing only the resolution is changing they are all the same wallpapers okay so i think we will not uh, do much we will come back to the default gecko wallpaper now let us check out the legacy application theme so new mix high contrast and advaita is there so if we ch uh, change over to advaita or advaita dark then this Gnome desktop will just look like uh, any other Gnome desktop of any other Linux distribution. The Numix uh, team is giving the special look of uh, the Gecko Linux. So we will keep the uh, Numix team or if you want I will just show you what happens. So here you can see the desktop now looks just like uh, a Gnome desktop. So if you want further I will just uh, show you how the things will change. We change it over to Gnome, the icon, th uh, icon thing, and then in the uh, this, let me just check. We are done. Yes, and now we will change the wallpaper to the open switcher. Yes. Now you cannot uh, check and say that this is a Gnome desktop or a Gecko, Gecko Linux desktop. So it is now it just looks like any open source Gnome desktop. So the loops are completely changed just by changing the themes of icons, legacy applications and the image or the wallpaper we are changed. So this is how everything is done. So now what I will do is we will keep this, we will do further checks. Now let us check other things. Anything is pending is there. Archive manager is there. Okay. So nothing uh, new to see here. We will go to the next page. 
Yes, CC Studio Image Writer is there. So this is a great tool. Any ISO you have to uh, write, you have to drag and drop it here, and then you have to select the inserted USB device from here, and then you have to just write it. It's very simple but very effective. Now we will check out the YAST utilities. Let us see the YAST file system snapshots, but this will not work right now, but because we are not using the butter FS. Let us see. So it will, uh, will just, you can see it here, the error is there because no snapper configurations exist. Because we are doing XFS, we should use the butter FS if you want to do the system snapshot. So this is how it looks. It will not work, it will just uh, crash. Now let us check out the YAST software repository. So we will check out which repositories, how the repositories are configured. So here you can see the Gecko Linux is using Pacman Tumbleweed as the default uh, repository for the media codex and the multimedia. Whereas the Tumbleweed OSS updates, the Tumbleweed non-OSS, Tumbleweed OSS, Google Chrome is there, it is default, you can see it here, Google Talk plugin is there, NVIDIA is there by default, so you need not separately install the NVIDIA uh, drivers from the NVIDIA repo of Open Society is already there, you can see it here, and the Skype is also included by default, so this is the default repos in Echo Linux. So we can refresh this or we can say OK. Now, YAS software manager is also there. So we can check this out, how this works on Gecko Linux, whether this applications, YAS applications work properly on Gecko Linux or not that we are checking out. You can see it here. Let us see if the, some updates are there. Import untrusted JPG key. So what is that? Which okay. So this is the Open SUSA project signing key. So we can trust this. Not an issue. So it is downloading some JPG keys, updated JPG keys from the Open SUSA repos. And after this, there will of course some updates because Tumbleweed daily there are some updates. It is one of the most updated uh, Linux distributions after the Arch Linux. Every, every time there are some fresh updates, especially for the KDE desktop. Not Gnome. Gnome is little slower up updates. But the KDE has lot of tons of updates are there. Every week you get at least two or three days there are some updates. So we will just let it update. Then we can do uh, sudo um, Zyper update, you can see it here, there are some updates are there, so what we will do is, I think these are the updates or what, let us try to accept it in the update, yes, these are the updates, so it is installing uh, those 3, 4 updates that were there, so this is, we are testing whether the repos get updated properly, the updates are in, uh, available and installed properly in the Gecko Linux. Because uh, in the end, the end user wants to have a stable system, so he can work peacefully and focus on his work instead of focusing on the system itself. Most of the users think uh, in this way. So we have installed some uh, packages, patterns, glib, hardware caps, KMU guest agent, SPICE VDA agent and the U-code uh, that is the AMD driver, some drivers are there, so those I have installed and now we can finish this, so the update is properly working, now what we will do is, we will go further, let us check out the YAST partition, what it has to offer us, Only use this program if you are familiar with the partitioning of this. So yes, we are familiar. So it is just a standard, uh, you can say, warning. You can see it here, the VDA hard disk, that is a root partition with the XFS 
file system is there size is 23.38 so it is reporting correctly everything is there so butter refresh is not there so there are no butter refresh volume no temporary file system no nfs volume no lbm volume groups only one partition with the xfs file system that is the root partition that's it so now we will finish this i think nothing further is there yast language rest of the things i think we can check out in uh, other uh, desktop when we review other desktop we will check out the other things because uh, we have to have some st uh, stuff inside the video every time so every video has some uh, has to have something new if we show everything here then the other desktop reviews will get very short so i think we have done a proper check of the gnome desktop it is working perfectly there is no issue only it is little tad slower than the open source gnome desktop but it is quite stable i did not see any misbehavior just only little bit sluggish than the open source you know desktop that's it otherwise it is working very perfectly maybe this is this is because of xfs or maybe this is because of the configs in the gecko linux but otherwise it is working perfectly there is no issue you can install and enjoy your gecko linux so see you in the next video bye bye